You know how you're not supposed to wear white after Labor Day? Imagine a similar rule for baseball hats, making it a crime, a fashion, to wear any hat with a soft cap and a stiff bill after a certain date, say September 15th, right near the end of baseball season. And imagine that the penalty for breaking this rule isn't a bit of a side eye at the country club, but having a friend of yours gleefully rip your hat off your head and tear it to pieces in front of you. You may be surprised to learn that this is not a hypothetical situation. This was socially acceptable behavior, at least in New York in the early 20th century. The baseball hats of a hundred years ago were straw hats. Pretty much everyone had one. And if you were still wearing one on September 16th, you could expect to be mocked in the very least. If your friends were around, it was perfectly normal for them to tear your hat off your head and smash it. Serve you right for being one full day out of fashion. The typical method of destruction was for the persecutor to hold the stolen hat just out of reach of its owner and use the other hand to punch a hole in the top before mingling it further. Because this was something friends did to one another, they at least had the courtesy to remove it from the owner's head before smashing it to pieces. On September 13, 1922, two days before the deadline, the usual number of men, a huge number of men, were still wearing hats in the streets of Manhattan. The reason we know how many men were wearing straw hats in this random place on this random day in the middle of a faraway September is that almost every one of those hats were smashed, not by friends, but by strangers. The old courtesy of removing the hat before destroying it was not extended to everyone. It was much more efficient to just smash the hat where it sat on top of someone's head before moving on to the next hat on the next head and doing it again. Think of the way teenagers used to smash mailboxes with baseball hats, one after another, while driving down the road. And some of these hat smashers were using bats, or sticks very much like bats, in their attacks. At first, the police were reluctant to respond. This is New York, and you want us to pull off this homicide case because of a 15-year kid smashed your pretty hat? But the calls just kept coming in, some from hospitals treating victims who had been badly beaten. It eventually became clear that these attacks were not random, but were part of a coordinated, strategic assault. But for what? More than 1,000 youths between the age of 10 and 18 had taken to the streets at the same time, in different pockets of the city, to perform the same act of wardrobe vandalism. All that they had accomplished was the destruction of a bunch of strangers' clothing. To what end? The name of the Straw Hat Riots comes from a New York Times article from the following morning titled, City Has Wild Night of Straw Hat Riots. It read, Gangs of youth hoodlums ran riot in various parts of the city last night, smashing unseasonable straw hats and trampling them in the street. In some cases, mobs of hundreds of boys and young men terrorized whole blocks. A favorite practice of gangsters was to arm themselves with sticks, some with nails at the tip, and compel men wearing hats to run a gauntlet. Sometimes the hoodlums would hide in doorways and dash out, ten or twelve strong, to attack one or two men. Along Christopher Street, on the lower west side, the attackers lined up along the surface car tracks and yanked straw hats off the heads of passengers as the cars passed. The street where such incidents occurred were strewn with broken straw hats. Hat stores, which kept open last night, were crowded with purchasers of fall hats. Hat shops in the history of New York have ever done better business, Constellation of Felt and Velvet Hat Shops did on the night of September 13th, 1922. Remember, the Times said, The street where such incidents occurred were strewn with broken straw hats. Hat stores, which kept open last night, were crowded with purchasers of fall hats. And the Tribune added, Some hat stores kept their doors open, long after the usual closing time, and did a thriving business in soft hats. In some instances, the police reported that the youth marauders were suspiciously active in the immediate vicinity of such stores. Somehow, not one of these stores was ever prosecuted, nor is there any record of them being actively investigated. But reading about the straw hat riots today, the lesson seems clear. Whenever something goes wrong in a way, that seems premeditated, and everyone in front of you seems to be losing, dig a little deeper, expand your purview, and always, always follow the money. 